My name is Julia Ferrioli, and I'm a developer advocate with the Google Cloud Platform. Today, I have the privilege to introduce Ashley Gavin, who's a curriculum consultant to schools, nonprofits, and companies with an intense desire to teach young people computer science. Hi, thanks. Yeah, so um, during CS Ed Week, we got to hear a little bit about the Girls Who Code mission, as well as some of the long-term goals of the organization. So what, what drew you to Girls Who Code? Um, it's actually kind of a funny story. I uh, left uh, my work at MIT Lincoln Laboratory um, without a job, knowing that I wanted to move back to New York mm -hmm. to write a musical, um, so really completely tangential. But I got a call from a friend saying there was this organization uh, that was teaching young women how to code, and they uh, lost their robotics instructor. Um, and when I was at Bryn Mawr, uh, they offered a course teaching computer science using personal robots. So I thought, oh, this is a really good match. And uh, I happened to have 10 robots in my closet, as I always do. Um, and I said, I can be there next week. And so I went in and learned a little more about the organization and never left. That's awesome. Was the having the 10 robots in your closet a prerequisite? No, no. But uh, it's just something that I always happen to have. <laughs> uh, I have more robots than any one person should, and especially in the closet. Yeah. What, what kind of robots are they? Uh, so they're called Scribbler robots. Uh, you can, the robot itself is made by a company called Parallax. Um, you can actually buy them online. And they have a little chip developed by uh, Bryn Mawr College and uh, Georgia Tech, uh, specifically to run you know, certain APIs and, and, and such for educating kids in computer science. That's fantastic. Um, so curriculum developer, that's not a, really a career that you hear about very often within technology. Definitely wasn't one that I had ever heard about when I graduated with my CS degree. Um, so tell us a little bit about what, what you do within Girls Who Code. Yeah, so when I first started teaching at Girls Who Code, the role of curriculum developer was not something that I had heard about either. Um, it sort of formed itself. Uh, most of my responsibilities vary on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, some days I'm helping teachers with their instruction uh, in the classroom. Other days I'm training teachers on how to give instruction. Other days I'm uh, writing code to develop libraries for uh, making computer science education easier. I'm assessing other people's libraries. Um, and other days I'm just writing a ton of assignments, um, thinking of creative ways to get people interested in computer science through things like art and music and robotics, uh, app development, things of that nature. So it's all over the place. It's working with people. It's working alone. It's really fun. It sounds like the per perfect combination for someone whose interests vary quite a bit as well. Yeah, yeah. I think so. Yeah, so that that sounds that's awesome. Um, for those who might be interested in pursuing a similar path, can you tell us a bit about your background and how, how you got to where you are today? Yeah, uh, so I started as a typical computer science major. Um, I knew I wanted to major in computer science. I was lucky enough to be exposed to computer science in high school. Um, um, fortunate enough that an advisor talked to me about it. Um, I had never really thought of teaching as a career. Uh, but while I was in college, I loved being a teaching assistant. It was like my favorite thing. I worked on a fellowship where I actually worked with Bryn Mawr professors on that Scribbler uh, uh, project that I described. And when I got into my later years of college, I started teaching middle schoolers, and I found that all of my extracurricular activities were centered around teaching or advertising computer science, mm -hmm. which probably should have been a sure sign that I should do that. Uh, but when I graduated, I went to MIT, which was phenomenal and a great experience. But I found myself yearning to be doing more interaction with people and to be helping more in people in a more direct way. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's when I found out about Girls Who Code, it kind of dawned on me like, oh, maybe you should try doing this for a living. You really like it. And um, I think it's something that not a lot of computer science majors consider while they're in college. Definitely not. It's it's not a career that I had ever heard about, um, and it 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 sounds almost kind of similar to, to what what I do in developer relations as well, um, helping people learn new technologies. Um, so, what kind of what kind of role did science and math play in your early life? Um, do you think that you were uniquely suited to um, go into computer science once you were exposed? Um, 
In some ways, yes, and in some ways, absolutely not. People thought I probably would have been a train wreck. So <laughs> I'll start with the yes. <laughs> I played tons of video games as a kid, which is sometimes a telltale sign that, that you might enjoy making a video game or making technology. Um, I was the kind of kid that built websites for fun. Mm -hmm. uh, I loved Photoshop. Uh, but simultaneously, at the same time, I was um, flunking biology and getting Ds in math. Uh, I begged to get out of math, actually, but I wasn't allowed to take computer science at first because of my poor math grades. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, yeah. And uh, so I think a lot of people would have said, you know, maybe she could be a graphic designer or a web designer, but I don't think a lot of people would have said that I'd be a good computer scientist. Mm -hmm. And so finally, when my advisor in high school took over, he took over the computer science department and opened it up to more kinds of students, I was lucky enough to try it, and magically, I was very good at it, and my other grades improved, all the typical signs of when a student is excelling, you know, it sort of excels across the board, um, and I just never stopped. That, that's, that's an amazing story. Um, what would you say to uh, other young adults who m maybe think that math isn't really their strong suit, but the, the idea behind creation and making um, that you oftentimes see in computer science and technology um, still appeals to them? What, how, would you, how would you guide to them? Yeah, I think, I mean, there's first of all the initial fear of mm -hmm. feeling like you are not one of those people or it's not for you. And I would say, if you're the kind of person who enjoys any art form, mm -hmm. creation with your hands, uh, with words, uh, with performance, I would say at least consider it um, and look at it from the perspective of building a world. What kind of world do you want to build? Is it a video game world? Is it an app world? Mm -hmm. And that can make it a lot more appealing. Um, and at Girls Who Code, we start our first week entirely building video games. Um, oh, wow. So just to keep kids in, engaged. And they, they come out pretty complicated and pretty fun. Um, as far as directly actually going out and learning computer science, mm -hmm. I think you have to get a little creative in where you look for resources uh, because it can be taught a little dry uh, dryly. Um, and I think that's why people get turned off because they're not doing a full week long of video games as their first assignment. So. I actually would recommend looking for a game development course or an app development course. Mm -hmm. Those are probably a good place to start rather than straight up computer science. I think it might be a more engaging way to learn. Gotcha. And you actually had the, the benefit of working with robots in some of the intro classes for computer science as well. Um, would you recommend that approach to, to learning computer science principles? Absolutely, yeah. In fact, if you're willing to go out and get one of these robots or download a uh, the software that we can we provide links at the end of this is that a we can we can put them in the comments okay yeah, yeah. we'll put some, put some in the comments I have some links to open source materials that you can teach yourself Python while using either a real or simulated robot cool. I recommend the real robot but not everyone <laughs> has 200 bucks to shell out uh, for a robot so or you can yeah. borrow one of my 10 that's not a real offer but uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll provide links I guess yeah definitely definitely um, so let's dive into a little bit of uh, the Girls Who Code aspect of, of your role here. Um, what makes the curriculum of Girls Who Code different than a traditional CS education? You touched a little bit on this um, Yeah, already. I think there are two ways to look at it. There's the actual content that we teach, and then there's the process by which we deliver that content. In mm -hmm. terms of the actual content that we teach, it's very similar to like the first two semester of college level computer science, mm -hmm. except everything's done through a, la a, a another layer, and each week that layer changes. So mm -hmm. the first week the layer is video games, the second week the layer is robotics, the third week the layer is art, like uh, graphics like Pixar, for example, yeah. uh, sort of thing, mm -hmm. or uh, uh, other you know 3D animation graphics. Um, and because we have a different layer every week, it's not just appealing to young women; it's appealing to anyone who has an interest in any of those layers. So if you're the kind of person that's interested in medicine or uh, mobile applications, you can find how computer science can be interesting to you. Um, a lot of young women want to help people, so a lot mm -hmm. of these layers, as I'm calling them, have to do with helping helping you know people through medicine or through uh, sort of social justice. Um, and that, that makes it very girl friendly, or I just think human friendly. Um, yeah. I think without that layer, it can get dry, and, and it's important to have that. 
On the other side, we, I, I think a lot of computer science education right now is uh, sort of like the way we learned math like 50 years ago. Uh, it's very rote, it, um, mm -hmm. and it's more about syntax and, and language, whereas at Girls Who Code, it's very project-based and it's very exploratory. We don't really have a set curriculum in terms of today you're going to learn about uh, uh, operators or today you're going to learn about uh, booleans. We kind of find those topics through our projects and the projects are designed to find those topics but the girls will enc encounter them on their own mm -hmm. and actually look things up and learn about them based on their own initiative which makes it a lot more fun. You, you go out to learn something because you need it to make that video game work. It's a lot more interesting than learning operators for the sake of learning operators. So it's exploratory and experimental and uh, project-based. The layers definitely contextualize the lessons, um, so that, that's fantastic. Have any particular layers been uh, especially successful amongst, amongst young women? Yeah, we do a, I mean, this might not come as a surprise, but the mobile app week is mm -hmm. intensely popular. Everyone wants to make a mobile app. And some of these apps are really, really impressive. And it sort of brings out their own interests. We had um, some girls make a mobile application so that if you don't have a dollar, but you encounter someone on the street, a homeless individual, it automatically pulls up the, you actually using the Google Maps API, it automatically pulls up the closest soup kitchens and the closest homeless shelters and provides directions. Because a lot of times homeless individuals, they, they'd like to frequent those locations, but they don't know where they are. Mm -hmm. They don't have access to technology. And so this serves as like a little reminder um, that the that the user can can show this person and kind of has other information. So uh, really, really popular uh, mobile apps. Okay, so you have a you obviously have a really interesting role in technology, um, helping to inspire others to follow STEM careers. Have there been any, any specific moments where you thought, I can't believe that I get to do this in my day job? Yeah. So one comes to mind. Uh, and I like just get a little like giggly about it because it was just so cool. Um, well, two now, but the first one was we recently had an article in the New York Times mention us. Uh, something that people noticed was that uh, there's pretty good gender uh, equality in biology and forensic sciences. Mm -hmm. And um, we noticed that all of our students, when they come in, or many, many of our students, when they come in, they want to be forensic biologists. Um, and it's because of CSI. Mm -hmm. And so this article basically wrote, why is there not a you know, hacking coding equivalent of this where a young woman can watch TV and see another young woman coding? Mm -hmm. um, and after re uh, some producers at MTV actually read this article, reached out to us saying that they're producing a show where on MTV where a young woman solves crimes using uh, computing and works for uh, sort of the NYPD. Um, it's called Eye Candy, and it's uh, they made the pilot, and it's starring Victoria Justice. Probably most developers don't know who Victoria Justice is, but ask any 15-year-old who mm -hmm. Victoria Justice is, and she'll freak out. Okay. And they invited, they invited me to teach the entire cast how to code. And so I was sitting with wow. Victoria Justice, and she signed my robot. <laughs> Getting a little weird, but <laughs> she did. And uh, yeah, it was just amazing to... And uh, the director of Twilight, Catherine Hardwick, was there mm -hmm. as well. Um, and so she's directing the show. And that was pretty unbelievable. I couldn't believe that my computer science degree got me into the room with these amazing creative people. And uh, it was, a, it was a, a pretty cool moment. My students were obsessed. Like, they thought it was the coolest thing. <laughs> that's, that's, that's awesome. I, I mean, you, you taught basically people who probably had never thought they'd learn how to code how to code, um, and then got a signed robot to boot. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and they love, I, the, mm -hmm. the great thing about it was they were awesome at it. I mean, they were really good coders, and mm -hmm. I think that speaks to the creativity piece. Yeah. Um, they, they thought it was amazing, and they loved all the different applications they could, they could think about being used on the show. Because mm -hmm. um, there's, you know, not kind of related back to my work at MIT, there's interesting crime-solving abilities inherent in computer science that a lot of people don't know about, including the cast of the show. Yeah, 
De definitely. Um, well, that's fantastic. Thank you so much, Ashley, for, for joining us today um, and telling us a bit about Girls Who Code. Um, we'll we'll uh, see if we can get some links to some resources that, that you were mentioning today um, in, the, in the description of the video. Um, so thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. It was a lot of fun. Thank you for tuning in to the special edition of Women Techmakers. You can look forward to more segments um, coming down the pipe. To find out more about Girls Who Code, visit girlswhocode.com and make sure to check out our previous interview with Reshma Sajani, founder of Girls Who Code.